Welcome everyone to another enlightening Ascension Wisdom Conversations. It is brought to you by Galactic Ascension Academy at SheilaTillich.com. Yes, this is the time to awaken and live your soul's mastery. I am a Galactic Grandmother, Sheila Tillich, and I invite you to relax and enjoy this time together as we discover our Ascension Wisdom Mastery. As souls, we have entered a higher dimensional reality as humans on planet Earth. This is the new energy consciousness. It has awakened our multidimensional spiritual DNA abilities, which are given to us by our galactic ancestors. Join me, dear ones, as we live at our soul's full potential, live in our wisdom mastery in this ascension time. Welcome back, everyone. And I am your host, Reverend Sheila B. Chillick. And today, we're going to have a special time together with me. I'm going to share a little bit more about myself and my own life experiences. This is all about serendipity. And my whole life is about serendipity and also synchronicity about how things have changed my life to be who I am today. I would like to talk to you about my beautiful, amazing story with my own life experiences with death, with my own family member's death, and one in particular is about my brother Bob. So I, a little bit of history, was brought up in a big Irish Catholic family. And there was actually 10 of us, including my parents. So there was eight children. And I am number six out of eight kids. My brother Bob was number eight. He was the youngest out of all of us. Bob and I always had a very close relationship all the way from childhood. My brother Bob actually died in December of 2019. Now, before I start telling you about what happened with my brother Bob, let me share that I have had a many life experiences with trauma and death from my own family members. And out of the 10 of us, there are only two left. So my experiences with death and tragedy started very in a very young age, when I actually when I was 15, when my father died. He died at a very young age, at 48, and he died from lung disease, lung cancer, and also heart disease. He also was an active alcoholic. Three years later, my younger brother, Kevin, a year and a half younger than me, actually committed suicide. He was 17 and I was 18. His death actually started me on a time of denial, denial of the pain that I experienced from his death and what it meant to me. So the next death that happened in my family was my mother who died in 1989. She died from lung cancer and died very quickly. And it really devastated me because I just started having a relationship with my mother. And the reason why I'm starting to tell you all these different deaths in my family is to kind of show you the transition of that I had to do with my own life and also how I actually handled each of these deaths and also my awakening to each of these deaths and connecting with spirit on the spiritual realm. Very quickly, within a year's time, another death happened and this was devastating to me also. My sister Faith, or Faith, she died almost a year later to the date that my mother died and she was actually killed in a car accident. Faye and I was very, very close. We were the closest of the siblings. She was a year and a half older than me, and her death was traumatic for me. But I also knew that I was changing through each and every experience of death in my family. I became closer and closer to spirit. I was able to start to connect with their frequencies on a more daily situation every day that I would have communication with them. And this was part of my awakening to what I do now. Then in 1993, after I got into recovery for alcoholism, I went back to school. 
I always wanted to be a nurse midwife, and that's exactly what I did. I went back to school. And during that time, there's many things that happened with me. In school, I was able to learn about hospice work, and I started doing hospice work. And that is when spirit really started communicating with me. And I realized that I couldn't deny what I knew and the communications that I was having all through the years from my loved ones. When I was actually with clients or patients, I was able to, to communicate with their loved ones and also with them before they transitioned over. So you see, all these different deaths that I experienced actually formed who I am now and the story that I'm going to share with you about my brother Bob. But let me continue with the deaths so that you kind of know the more people of spirits, family members that are part of my journey and who help me each and every day. My next family member was my older sister, Anita. Anita actually died in 2008. She was a Reiki master who did healing work in Reiki, and also she lived her life as a native. N Nita and I was very, very close, and her death traumatized me a lot too, but I felt more closer to her when she passed over. Then the ne next sibling that died was my brother George, and he died in 2012. Now, Brother George was a... <laughs> Um, a wonderful soul and he taught me so many things when he was alive and also he teaches me many things as after he's transitioned and he was actually a metaphysical researcher and philosopher and had his own radio show with over 4,000 tape shows on metaphysics before he died I was not in the metaphysical realm many years before but as I chuckle now of his influence on me really helped me to be who I am today. So my brother George died in 2012. Then another sibling, Corrine, died in 2013. Corrine, I was able to help cross over. I was actually her caregiver, and we were very, very close. And I am just so thankful for my ability as a hospice worker to be able to care for my own sister. But I will tell you, Taking care of family members is a totally different situation when you work in the hospice field. However, it does give you some beautiful insights and also my own personal healings as I help my own siblings cross over. So now I'm going to talk to you about my brother Bob. My brother Bob died in 2019. He was the closest of all my siblings. And his death was the hardest for me because you see my brother Bob and I was connected in many many lives not only this lifetime but many other lifetimes but I never realized it until after he died that he was actually one of my soulmates and a lot of people in today's realm are starting to understand that soulmates are people that you've had relationships with in many other lifetimes and you've come back to live your life together in this lifetime. Even though it wasn't a romantic soul connection, it was a soul to soul connection that we had taken care of each other in many, many other lifetimes. And that's exactly what we did in this lifetime. So my brother Bob, my brother Bob was an amazing soul. He was one of the smartest men I've ever known. You see, my brother Bob he was a very staunch Marine. Yes, he was a Marine. And he had many years in the Marine Corps. And everyone that knew him knew that he was a strong, patriotic, no-nonsense kind of guy. And what he said goes. He was so intelligent. And when he left the Marine Corps, he actually went on and got a degree in history. And as an archivist, he actually worked at a major hospital that I actually worked at, and we both worked together. So my brother Bob, as I said, we were always very close. Even when he went into the Marines in the late 70s, I was his health care proxy. And all the way up until his death, I was still his health care proxy. 
even though there is many, many years in between, we still considered each other totally connected and that we knew that each other would carry out what needed to be done. And that's exactly what Bob did. He knew that I would always be there for him. And that's exactly what I did. And me sharing about him is his message to humanity that he wants people to know that it's all about love, that your soul never dies. They are always with us each and every day. So what happened with my brother Bob, because we were so close, of course, we had many civil rivalry type of situations where we had to take a break from each other. And I chuckle when I say take a break because it only happened like three times in our whole life where we weren't talking to each other. But in 2019, we had another falling out where we were taking a break from each other. We not actually being totally not in communication with each other, but not doing a lot of things together. So we called that our break. And what happened in 2019 is that he had a massive heart attack. Now, my brother Bob was plagued with heart disease for many years, and he was only 59 years old when he died. However, a lot of the things in his life, the stressors, caused a lot of health issues. And one of the biggest health issues was his anger, was his fear that was locked inside. And with me, what I did was I had to deal with a lot of my own fear, my own anger, and this is what I did in my own life and as a practitioner for holistic health. My brother didn't believe in holistic health. He just believed in mainstream science. And he did not want to hear the things that I had learned about through science and spirituality. So there was a little bit of a division there <laughs> with him and I. But there was always respect and love between the two of us. And me telling this story about how he was totally in control through his own death and his experiences, and also how he was able to communicate with me his love that he had for me and also for everyone else. So in December 2019, he had a major heart attack. And when the EMTs came to his home, they revived him and they put him on life support. And they took him to a hospital. Matter of fact, it was the same hospital that we both had worked on a few years before. When I got to the hospital, I knew exactly what had happened. My brother was almost brain dead. And it was very sad because I knew that it was going to take time before he was going to be able to be released from his body. Because when the ambulance people came and picked him up, they did not know that he had a DNR. They did not know that he did not want to be incubated in any way. I knew, but I wasn't informed in time. So he was sent to the hospital, almost brain dead. And this is the story of how, when he got to the hospital, what happened from then until five days later when he finally transitioned over. As I said, my brother was a very staunch, very military, patriotic man, and he had wonderful, wonderful friends, and just like I have. My brother also was in recovery, in recovery programs through AA, just like I am. And because he has passed over, I'm able to share that, because it is about an anonymous program. But I openly share who I am, and it is part of who I am, where I came from, and I'm very proud of that. My brother's situation was that everyone that we were close with in recovery programs were there for us, and I'm just so very, very grateful. So when we got the diagnosis that my brother had less than 20% of his brain left, I knew what that meant. And I had friends from the program that were in the room with me and also 
neighbors of my brother's who was in the room with me when the doctor gave us the diagnosis and that I was to contact my nephew, his only living survival survivor, and then also my sister, my only sibling that is left out of my childhood family. Right after I called my nephew and my sister and gave them the prognosis, in a small room with our AA friends and neighbors that were close to my brother, my loved ones all came to me in spirit. My, all my spirit guides, all of my angels and people that helped me, I call them my team, came forward. And then also my family members, one by one, came right in front of me. My father, my brother, my sisters, my mother. And I kept saying in my head, why again? I have to go through this again, another tragedy, another trauma. And they told me, and because this is what you do. This is what you're here for. I started to cry when they were communicating with me and the other people that were in my room, in the room, noticed what was going on. And then my brother Bob came to me right in front of my face with a beautiful smile on his face. No more anger from the last time that we had been across from each other. And he said, I'm not coming back. You know what to do. I'll be calling the shots and I'll be standing right beside you. And oh, dear listeners, that's exactly what he did. The next five days, he was standing beside me. He knew that he was almost brain dead. And that is why he was not coming back. He also knew that I knew what to do because I was his healthcare proxy. And 10 years before, in that same hospital, when he had a small heart attack, we wrote down what his healthcare directors were. And he put that if he had no chance of surviving to be, live a normal life, he did not want to be on any type of life support. So he knew that I knew what to do. I also knew as a healthcare worker, what the actual course is going to be because he was also an organ donator. And there are certain protocols that you have to follow if people are going to donate their organs. Now, the next five days was such beautiful miracles and also revelation showing that he was calling the shots and that his soul was very much still with us on the life planes. In my role as a sister, but also as a medium and intuitive and who can communicate with the crossed over, the spirits, even before they crossed over, came to life in many areas. We both worked at this hospital that he was taken to years before. So I was known, and he also was known as the archivist, so I was able to help my former colleagues with this whole situation and also to be able to help my nephew deal with the loss of his father soon to come, also my sister, and also myself being able to be the actual communicator between my brother's soul, who was very much still here. On the, on the physical plane, in spirit, but not in a physical body. So the next five days, he was calling the shots. I was able to communicate with my colleagues what he was feeling, what he was thinking. And the biggest thing was his anger still that he was put on life support for so long. He wanted to be let go. He wanted to be able to be free from his physical body so that he could transition. But he also knew that it took a little time for his son and other loved ones to be able to assimilate all this and to deal with the stress that was happening to their life. That they would not have a father anymore, that he was not going to come back, that there was no chance of him coming back. 
and it had to be done kindly with kit hands. And that's exactly what I did. So the day that he actually passed was five days from start to finish, and I was the only one with him. And right before he passed, he told me to come take his temperature because he wanted my hands to be on him. I took his temperature, and right when I was taking his temperature is when he crossed. This was a very powerful moment for me because I was able to be with my brother with his soul when he passed over. It also gave us some time to be together. How he shared, how proud he was for me. How proud he, he was of me and what I did. And also, he was proud to be my brother and to support me. And that he would always, always be very close. So as I went home and prepared for the funeral for my brother, the day of the funeral, I asked him what he wanted me to share at the eulogy at his funeral. And he says, I want you to share when I came to you after the doctor gave you the prognosis and four phrases that I said to you. And I said to him, are you crazy? A lot of the people that will be there at the funeral did not know what I do, did not know that I can communicate with the dead. He said, yes, that's exactly what I want you to do. So that is what I did. But before I did that, many of his friends came forward and talked about their dear friend Bob. What a strong, loving man he was, who would give the shirt off his back to help another. And that's exactly who he was. And we learned that from our father and our mother as they raised eight children. And they raised children to be strong, loving adults. Deep down in their soul, no matter what happens to you, it's always about love. His friends talked about all the things that he did to help them over the years. Nothing was ever said about his anger and the pain that he caused a lot of them because this was actually a celebration of his life. They came to honor my dear brother Bob. They came to honor their friend. They came to give respect to my nephew and my sister and I. They were there to support us and to share their beautiful, loving stories. After everyone spoke, then I was able to get up and talk about what my brother wanted me to share with everyone. I shared what he told me to start from the beginning, to share that we came from a large family and that we were always close. We were always in each other's lives and that we will continue to be in each other's life. Then I shared the four phrases that he said to me. He said, I'm not coming back. You know what to do. I'll be calling the shots and I'll be standing right beside you. And I was able to share this with love and to communicate the reason why he wanted me to share this is that he wanted each and every one of them to remember that we each have our own persona and our roles to play in this lifetime. But what really matters is that it's all about love. And he wanted them to remember him with kindness and with loving memories and not to think of all the pain that he might have caused them but to think of the love that he shared with them. He wanted them to know that it's all about love. And that is why I'm sharing my own personal story, the serendipity part about it. All the things that I have learned as a practitioner, as a soul, as a healer in this lifetime, is that I know that my soul lives and has lived 
and will continue to live, just like I know my loved ones are still walking beside me. They haven't left. They continue to communicate with me each and every day. And I am so grateful that they are closer to me in spirit than they ever were in life form in this human life. Because you see, I recognize who they really were as souls. We've been together in thousands of lifetimes together. And this gives me comfort to know that as I pass, which will be someday, as we all will pass, that we will never ever die. Our soul never dies. And this gives me such great comfort. I hope this actual sharing my own personal life experiences will help you, help you see your own mission in life, the things that you're here to learn and why, and to always come from your heart center, come from the love that you have inside, because you know, that is all that matters. It's all about love. And it's all about communicating that love. So, that's it for now. I hope you have enjoyed me sharing my own personal story about how the serendipity things in my life, how I have evolved as a soul to be able to do this work. And I am so, so grateful to be able to share my story with you, my dear listeners. Please join me again next time. I help you align your mission with your true passion. Until then, namaste, and so it is, dear ones, and so it is. Are you ready to ascend to new heights of consciousness? Are you ready to live your ascension wisdom mastery? Dive into the Galactic Ascension Academy, where cosmic wisdom meets spiritual evolution. Unlock premium courses with like-minded seekers. Join a community of awakened souls and experience monthly group healing sessions. Elevate your journey with Star Mother's activations, teachings, and meditations. Join the Galactic Ascension Academy today and awaken the stardust DNA within you. The cosmic journey starts now.